My name is Ryan Reagan and I'm with Alaska Department of Fish and Game Division of Sport Fish. In this video we're going to show you how to tie a shrimp fly that you can use to target rockfish. Um, this fly can be used to target both pelagic and non-pelagic species of rockfish and it's in fact very effective when targeting um, those species. Now even though as the name implies this is a fly, uh, you can use this um, with a spinning rod setup or a bait cast style setup. If you wanted to try fly fishing for rockfish, you could certainly add this to a fly rod and uh, fish it that way. At the end of the video, we'll show you how to use two of these flies on a single leader with a couple of dropper loops on it. Um, that's, that's how we normally fish these when we're out because when we're targeting rockfish, we're typically fishing in a little bit deeper water. But before we get going, we'll cover a list of materials that you need to construct this fly. So for this fly, we're going to start by pointing out the two different colors of uh, flash material we have here. This is crystal flash. Um, I'm using pink and orange. You can vary your colors depending upon um, what you want to achieve with the colors of this fly. This is just a pretty common setup that I like to use. The thread I'm using today is a 210 denier in pink. You can also use white, orange, red, whichever color you have. Just a strong thread is what you need for this. I'm using a 4 uh hook today for this application. Uh, this happens to be a Gamakatsu executive hook. The, the main thing I want in a hook like this is a just heavy gauge, um, heavy gauge hook. Uh, based on the fact that you know rockfish are fairly strong, they do live in rocky structures, so if you get this caught on something, you're not going to bend your hook. And a nice sharp point is uh, lastly what you want. So uh, you can use a saltwater style hook, but just a large hook with a strong uh, heavy gauge is uh, what you're after. Lastly, we're using a small section of pink chenille. Uh, again, you can vary your coloration of this up however you see fit, but for this application we're using a pink. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of super glue to help with the overall durability of this fly. Uh, again, this is optional. However, uh, you can use UV epoxy or even head cement uh, in this application. So let's get started tying the fly. We'll get started by applying a baseline of thread here. I'm using this pink color. However, this thread uh, can be used in orange or red or even white. Um, once I've got this base set up, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually take this and come around the bend of the hook slightly. Uh, we're going to do this for a specific purpose, but as you can see here, I've got it just around the bend of the hook, and I'm just going to come up and, and basically stop just short of the eye of the hook. I'm doing that to make this as an indicator for where I'm going to stop um, tying in my uh, chenille. This fly is relatively quick to tie, and we're going to start by adding a, I usually use about a 10 inch section of chenille. This is pink chenille, obviously. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and tie this in on our base. We're going to kind of come up toward where we stopped with the thread, tie it in all the way back to where our thread ended on the bend of the hook there. And I like to build this up a little bit, just adds to the overall durability of this fly. And once we've reached the back here, we're just simply going to take our thread and move it up toward the eye of the hook and let, the, let, it, let it hang there. Now at this point, what I like to do is come in with a small dab of super glue and just add a little bit to the shank of the hook. And this does a couple things. In my mind, it increases the durability of the fly, and it also allows the chenille to attach a little bit firmer to the shank of the hook. After we've done that, we're simply going to wrap forward uh, using adjacent wraps on the, using the chenille here. We're just going to keep coming forward. And again, it's collecting all that super glue that we put down there, so Helping, helping it hold more securely to the shank of the hook. You can see here, once I've reached my thread, I'm simply going to tie this off and trim the excess chenille. And keep that for a later time or dispose of it. And we're just going to come in and tie that in. And we're going to come forward a little bit, wrap toward the eye of the hook, and just build a small base here. And after we've done that, we're going to come back just a little bit there. And then we're going to grab a couple sections here of our crystal flash. When I'm pulling crystal flash off, I'm going to use two different colors here. I like to just separate the, 
material in about a section about that size. And I cut it, lay it down on my table. I'm going to grab my pink and separate roughly the same amount as we had with the orange. If you get a little more, a little less, that's fine. And I'm going to lay them on the table just next to each other. And when I pick them up, I just pick them up together. So you can see here I've got pink on top of the orange. You could go either way, orange on top of pink. It's not necessarily uh, super important for the construction of the fly. What I like to do is I like to kind of basically take the um, flash and just pinch it in half, lay it over the eye of the hook, come in here and wrap that material in. I wrap forward a little bit and back on itself just enough to get a good securing base on that. And then I'm going to take this front section and simply run it over the back. Then I'm going to come in here tie that in. As you can see here we're building just a small head on this fly covering any sort of material that we need and just tapering that head off as best we can. Don't worry about using too much thread in here you've got a lot of room to work with. When I'm done with that I'm going to go ahead and take my whip finisher and spin a couple whip finishes on this. Make sure that's nice and secure. Come in here, trim the excess. I like to come in with a small dab of super glue on this. Here you could also use head cement or UV epoxy. The last thing I'm going to do come, is come in here and just trim the excess flash material off here. I'm going to use the bend of the hook as basically a guide. I'm just going to come straight up from the bend basically and come about a mm, quarter inch over that and just trim it, trim it out. So in the end what you've got is a basically your material will sort of fly out like that and that's basically what you want and at this point the fly is complete. Alright so we've completed our rockfish fly, our shrimp pattern here and um, we've actually produced another video which is on our YouTube channel of, uh, of us using uh, this fly pattern out in Prince William Sound. Um, so if you want to see the fly in action we do talk a little bit about how to fish the fly please check that video out and um, at this point we'll cover how to put two of these particular fly patterns on a single leader with dropper loops on them and a weight. And it's basically the same rig we're using out in Prince William Sound targeting rockfish in the other video. All right, I've got a leader here that I've tied with two dropper loops on it. On one end, I've got a snap swivel over here. On the other end, I've got a single uh, barrel swivel. Um, this will be what gets attached to the fishing line. And then this, we're going to attach a cannonball weight um, we'll give you a rundown of how to put the shrimp fly onto one of these dropper loops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dropper loop here, I'm going to come toward the end, I'm going to pinch that down, and then I'm going to go from the bottom, this is the eye of the hook, I'm going to insert the pinched portion of the dropper loop through the bottom of the eye, going through the eye of the hook around the bottom. I'm going to come over. I'll call this section here a wing for lack of a better term and I'm just going to open that and go over all that material and once I've done that I'm going to come in here and make sure I'm not collecting anything just help ease this line down and then basically once I'm at the end here I can just kind of give it a quick pull and do the same on this dropper loop take the fly Run the line through the bottom, simply pull that over, make sure every, all the material, nothing gets caught in there, and then just go ahead and cinch that down once it's all set and done. Okay, and this is the setup, completed setup. I've got a small cannonball weight here. Um, the size of the weights that you're going to use when you're fishing this is going to depend on the current, how deep you want it to go. Anywhere from 8 to 12 ounce weight is fine. You can go higher if you need to. Um, it's not completely necessary, but in the end, this is kind of what your setup is going to look like. When you fish this, put the weight over there, over the side of the boat, obviously. Drop it down to the bottom, and as soon as it hits the bottom, crank it up, a, well, at least one crank, and then just start 
slowly jigging and again in that video that we shot which I encourage you to watch um, we demonstrate this in a little bit more of a um, in an actual setting so we hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the water